DeSoto and the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers from Coast to Coast present... Groucho Marx. You bet your life. And now, here he is, the one, the only... I'd like it better for Valella Brigida. Oh, that's me. Well, here I am again with $1,000 for one of our couples. A lot of money, eh? It certainly is. If any of them say the secret word, they'll divide $100. The word tonight is voice. And the duck will fly down and pay it to me. Okay, duck. Out of it at you. <laughs> Mr. Fenneman, fire it home away. All right, we have a young uh, married couple for you, Groucho. Mr. and Mrs. Hal Keen. Would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx? Welcome, welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Say the secret word, and you'll divide $100. It's a common word, something you, you always have with Mr. and Mrs. Hal Keene, eh? Mrs. Keene, I presume that's you, huh? That's right. Well, what is your first name, Mrs. Joanne. Keen? Joanne? That's right. Uh -huh. How old are you, Joanne? 23. 23, yeah? Well, you're a fine-looking girl. Thank you. And uh, your first name is Hal? That's right. Uh -huh. What kind of a job do you have? Oh, I have two professions. Well, that's good. In case things get slack, what are they? Well, I'm a representative for the Encyclopedia Britannica, and I'm a professional wrestler. You're a wrestler, and you also sell the encyclopedia? You're a half book salesman and half Nelson, in other words. <laughs> well, which interests you the most, uh, Joanne, books or wrestling? Wrestling, of course, because I'm lady wrestler myself. You're both wrestlers, That's eh? That's right. Mm -hmm. In other words, your, your marriage is a toss-up, eh? <laughs> How did you meet Hal, Joanne, uh, or was it more of a collision? Well, I met him in a mixed tag team match down south. A mixed he, what? Mixed tag team match. It's a man and woman on each side. And, uh, well, he was getting the best of my partner, so my partner... Oh, you were opposed to him? Yes. Mm -hmm. So my partner brought him over to the corner, and I grabbed his leg, and I accidentally broke it. <laughs> Why did you break his leg? So he couldn't run away? Well... That's certainly a primitive way of catching a husband. <laughs> right down to the caveman stuff, huh? Did you have uh, two uh, giant lovebirds ever practice wrestling around the house? Oh, yes. Uh -huh. Would could you like us to demonstrate? Could you demonstrate one of your favorite I'd wrestling grits to. on hell? And do it slowly, because 30 million wives will be lining this. Huh? <laughs> Go ahead, huh? Well, what about a headlock? Well, that's all right with me if he likes it, huh? You wouldn't want to just break his leg, huh? <laughs> now, hold it, hold it now, hold it. Hold it just for a minute. I want every young man who's contemplating matrimony to take a good look at it. <laughs> okay, Joanne, I'm good. The moral is, never marry a woman wrestler. Or a woman. Well, you're an unusual couple and a very attractive one, and I'd like to continue talking to you two, but the time has come to play You Bet Your Life. Now, well, let's see. Uh, you selected music, and remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. We start you off with a bankroll of $100. You try to build it up. If you miss a question, you lose half of whatever you've earned at that point. Is that, ri uh, is that right? Now, what do you want to start with? Seventy. Seventy. Okay, Seventy. 70. What great entertainer made famous the song, When My Baby Smiles at Me? Ted Lewis. Ted Lewis. Ted Lewis. Ted Lewis is right. That's right. We now have $170. Now what are you going to try? 80? Yeah, 80. $80. Ever since the gay 90s, millions of Americans have been singing a great song by Paul Dresser. Mr. Meekin's aggregation will play it. You tell me the name of it. Down B, Jack. That's right, on the banks of the Wabash is right. You now have $250. You now have $250. Now, what do you want to try? Remember, the bigger the question, the harder it is. Ninety. Um, okay, ninety. $90. Old Devil Moon and How Are Things and Glockamora are two hits from a big Broadway musical of a few years ago. What show was it? Work it over. <laughs> 
Uh, 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 the song with the, uh, the ferry in it, uh, South, Deep South Pacific. South Pacific. No, I'm oh. sorry. It's Finian's Rainbow. Oh. <laughs> well, you lost half your money. You now have $125. Okay, now don't get discouraged. Now, what are you going to try this time? Hard one or an easy one? Hundred. Mm. Go ahead. Hundred. Duke Ellington has given us some of our finest modern music. The orchestra is going to play one of his most popular works. You tell me what it is. Play, Jack. Take a guess if you don't know. Uh, sure, sure, yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. Sophisticated lady. One of the great standard songs of our time. Well, I'm sorry. You wind up with $62.50. Thanks, and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Sorry you didn't win more. Huh? And now, here are some more scenes from Groucho's European trip this summer. Here are two of the world's most famous ruins, the Colosseum and Groucho Marx. If this wasn't a picture of me, I'd say they were even coming out from under rocks to see the stylish new DeSoto for 1955. Tell them when, Gaius Fenneman. Wednesday, November 17th. That's the date. The day you'll be able to see the stylish new 1955 DeSoto for the first time. Wednesday, November 17th. Don't miss it. This is me in front of the world-famous Eiffel Tower. Seems a shame to me that they never finished it. But to business. I want you folks to watch a vous. That's French for the stylish new 1955 DeSoto. Tell them when, Fenneman. Wednesday, November 17th. That's the date. And DeSoto really is the car this year. So don't miss it. Wednesday, November 17th. Here I am in one of the most beautiful spots in Italy. Portofino. And what am I doing? Perpetuating the world's grisliest pun. It's all in a good cause, though. Because I really do want to tell you to watch for the marvelous new 1955 at Isoto. It's a coming your way for the first of time in three shakes. In Italian, three shakes means Wednesday, November 17th. And that's going to be your first chance to see this great new car. Wednesday, November 17th. Don't miss it. Okay, George, who's next? Well, Martha Parsons and Dr. Norman Hady were chosen because of their occupations, Groucho. So, folks, you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, welcome to You Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Uh, Martha Parsons and uh, Dr. Norman Hady. Uh, Hady, Hady, like it, Hady, like it, Amy. He sipped no sup and no crave no crumb as he sighed for the love of a lady. You ever hear that? No. No, that's the omen of the gods, Gilbert and Sullivan. Doesn't hurt, a little education here and there. <laughs> so, a doctor, eh? Where are you from, Doc? Detroit, Michigan. Detroit, eh? You should take off your hat when you say Detroit. Don't well, you know that's the automotive capital of the world? Well, I haven't got a hat on tonight, Groucho. Well, don't quibble, take off something else. Uh, <laughs> but my advice to you is to go out tomorrow and buy a hat in the fall season. <laughs> Right now, he wishes he had me on the operating table. Huh? <laughs> You're a pretty young-looking doctor at that. How old are you? Thirty-three. Thirty-three. How long have you been practicing? Oh, Eleven years. About time you quit practicing and got down to cases. <laughs> well, as a matter of fact, you look very capable, Doc. And, and just to show you there's no hard feelings, I'll some of my, send some of my friends your way. That'll be fine. You can send all of them, as long as they got four legs. I'm a veterinarian. <laughs> veterinarian, eh? Well, you're just a man for my friends, eh? Martha, you don't mind if I call you Martha, do you? No, that's fine. It's a lovely name, you know. There's been an opera written about that. Have yeah. you ever heard Martha? Yes. The opera? Could you sing <clears throat> some of it? No, I couldn't. <laughs> couldn't. Couldn't. You two are not musical at all, huh? Oh, I used to play the violin years ago. Uh -huh. Well, put a hat on the violin the next time you... <laughs> Where's your home, Martha? In Martha's Vineyard? No, in Speedway City, Indiana. That's just out of Indianapolis. What are you doing here in California, Martha? I work at...
Clary Multiplier Corporation. What kind of an outfit is this place? Well, they manufacture the famous Clary adding machine. Well, what is your job there, Martha? I'm a four lady. Mm -hmm. Where are the other three? Huh? <laughs> well, they just didn't come, I guess. Oh. Well, I don't know this. What is a four lady? I don't know how to explain it unless it's the uh, same as a woman, lady, huh? woman foreman. Except oh. I'm a woman, so they call me a four lady instead of a four man. Well, you certainly look like a woman, Martha. Thank you. And not only that, you look like a lady. Thank you. And what department are you in? I have charge of uh, the subassembly department in the gyroscope section mm -hmm. of the instrument. You know, so far I haven't understood anything that anybody has said to me tonight. <laughs> Your, your job sounds very important, Martha. Uh, how many men work for you? I don't have any men. I have seven girls. Oh. Well, you're certainly better off than I am. Huh? <laughs> seven girls, huh? That's even more important than I realize this job. Uh, you have charge of seven girls? Yes. Where do they put these gyroscopes? This is all uh, government work, and it's strictly confidential. Yeah. Seven women work on this job, and they keep it a secret? <laughs> Well, how do you get even one woman to keep it a secret? Do you sew zippers on them? They don't know what they're doing. <laughs> well, it certainly sounds like a government job. <laughs> what do you mean they don't know what they're doing? Well, they take component parts and put them together into sub-assemblies which uh, in turn will go into the uh, finished product, the gyro, and they never see the finished product. Mm, I see. Well, Doc, let's find out something about you. Apparently, I can't find out anything about you, Martha. <laughs> you say you're a veterinarian? That's right. Are you any good? For example, if somebody let the air out of my Airedale, could you give them a vulcanizing job? <laughs> well, I'm afraid not, Groucho. Uh, I specialize in uh, the diseases and surgery of cats. Uh, my practice is limited to cats only. We cats? That's right. Oh, no wonder you play the violin, eh? <laughs> I operate... Where do you treat these the felines? I mean, these felines. Uh, I have a hospital in West Los Angeles. Oh. And uh, the hospital was designed primarily to cater to sensitive pet cats, people who... Uh, pamper them, and we try to cater to the psychological and emotional needs of the cat as well as the medical needs. You mean you're a head shrinker, too? Huh? <laughs> you put them on the couch? Uh, to a certain extent, yes. Well, you, what, what happened if an alley cat came to your place? You throw them out? Huh? Well, Do and they I, have to have a pedigree when they arrive there? There is no such thing as an alley cat, actually. Those are domestic short hairs. No. I don't know what you call it, but I have an alley in back of my house. There's an awful lot of domestic short hairs on the <laughs> Including me chasing them away. Well, it's been very interesting talking to you two. Not particularly educational, but certainly interesting. Now, let's see how successful you'll be when it comes to winning some money. <clears throat> Remember, we start you off with $100. You build it as high as you can. If you miss a question, you lose half your bankroll. Are you ready? In the race for the $1,000, the first couple won $62.50, and the secret word is voice. You select a general information quiz, and remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. Now, what do you want to start with? One answer between you now, your partner. $80. $80. Is that all right with you, Martha? Yes. What is the time of office for a member of the United States Senate? How long? Six years. Six years is correct. <laughs> You now have one hundred eighty dollars. What are you going to try this time? Ninety. Ninety dollars. What is the name of the enormous reef found off the northeast coast of Australia? Tough question, but it's a lot of money. What is the name of the enormous reef found off the northeast coast of Australia? New Zealand. No. It's the Great Barrier Reef. You had 180, you lost half it, you now have $90. Now what are you going to do? Take an easy one or a hard one? Hard ones are tougher. The bigger ones. 70. 70. 
According to my friend, Mother Goose, who stuck his thumb, who stuck his thumb in a Christmas pie? <laughs> Little Jack Horner. Little Jack Horner is right. Huh? You now have $160. Here's your last chance to beat the other couples. What are you going to try? 100. What a historical figure was known as the Iron Duke? Talk it over. Your partners. And if you don't know, guess. Hmm? You say Napoleon? No, the Duke of Wellington. Mm -hmm. You lost half the 160, you wind up with $80. Well, thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Sorry you didn't win more. Uh, Groucho? Yes? Didn't you want to uh, mention this? That's a box of cocktail napkins. Each one has a cartoon and a joke about me on it. They're pretty clever. Would you see that each contestant on the show tonight buys a box of them, George? Well, I think better than that, we'll, uh, we'll give a box to each of the contestants. Give them a box? You call that better? Let them buy a box, the same as I have to. <laughs> well, if you want to buy a box, they're on sale at all department stores and gift shops all over the country. Yeah, that's better, George. Let's have no more of your charity on this show. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Roger, Miss Beverly uh, Putnam and Lieutenant... Richard Tabor of the United States Marines are waiting right outside here. Yeah. Uh, the lieutenant was chosen by our studio audience just before we went on the air. So, folks, you go in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, welcome to the DeSoto Plymouth Deal. <laughs> Say the secret word and you'll divide $100. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Let's see, uh, a Marine lieutenant and a pretty girl. Huh? Uh, that's a very handsome uniform. Are all Marine uniforms green? Uh, yes, sir. All Marine uniforms... Pardon me. Uh -huh. the Marine uniforms are green only in the wintertime. Oh, yeah. I thought they turned green in the spring. Was that... <laughs> or is that Christmas jewelry? Huh? No, sir. This is one of the oldest uniforms in the United States. In fact, it is the oldest. <laughs> oh, that's very interesting. I understand we're spending $49 billion on defense this year. Seems to me they could give you something new. <laughs> some hand-me-down from Valley Forge. <laughs> Why don't they get you a new one, Lieutenant? Well, sir, this, this uniform itself is a new one. It is? However, it does represent the oldest service uh, in, the Marine, in the United States. This is the week of the anniversary, the 179th anniversary of the Marine Corps. Oh. Beverly Putnam, is that you? Yes, Brad. I haven't been ignoring you, Bev. I, I may have been talking to the lieutenant, but my, my heart wasn't in it. <laughs> where are you from, Bev? I'm from Malone, New York, actually. I was from born where? There. Malone, New York. It's, Malone? It's in the Adirondacks near Lake Placid. Oh. Are you married? No, I'm not. Mm -hmm. Well, here goes the lieutenant's good conduct medal. And... <laughs> I can tell he's not married just by the way he's been looking at you. Bev. Either that or his wife's in Quantico, Virginia. <laughs> Are you married, Lieutenant? No, sir. You don't have to be quite so emphatic about it. <laughs> now, inasmuch as you two are going to get hitched, <laughs> let's find out something about you. Uh, Lieutenant, what branch of the Marines are you with? I'm with the 7th Engineer Battalion down at Camp Pendleton. Uh-huh. What job, what do you do in your job down there? Well, our job in the engineers is to construct roads, airfields, buildings, and other emplacements. Other emplacements, huh? Yes, sir. What's the other part of the job? Well, e equally important is the destruction of roads, airfields, and buildings, sir. Are these the same ones you just built? Occasionally. That's kind of discouraging, isn't it? In other words, when you have to retreat, you, re you wreck your own buildings, is sir, that Sir, the Marines never retreat. <laughs> There's a sailor out there that isn't applauding. Eh? He's prejudiced. Well, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I want to apologize. Uh, shall we call it an orderly withdrawal? No, sir. The ma Marines only advance. They may advance in a different direction, but they advance. 
Ah, the Marine Corps. That's right. <laughs> By the way, Lieutenant, I noticed those ribbons on your chest. Uh, what do they stand for? Well, this top one is for Beverly national is defense. Beverly is casing them, too, there. You know. What is it? National defense, sir. National defense? This next one is uh, U.S. ribbon for Korea with a battle star. Second one is awarded by the United Nations. The second, uh, third one over here is the Kore Korean Presidential Unit Citation Award to the 1st Marine Division. Well, I'll say that's pretty good. Thank you. Thank you. you know, a lot of people think the engineers have a pretty cushy job. Suppose you tell them how you operate in combat. We're always out there right with the infantry, either in front of them or right behind. That's certainly one of the most unfortunate statements tonight, huh? Well, we're, the only reason we're behind is we keep pushing them on. <laughs> He's a resourceful fellow, this lieutenant. We always have our weapons with us right alongside our tools, and occasionally we're called upon to lay down our tools, grab our weapons, and act a part of the infantry. Uh -huh. And where's the infantry while this is going on? That's what we'd like to know, sir. <laughs> Well, I want you to consider this a small tribute to the combat engineers of all branches of the service. Now, Beverly, let's get back to you. Who do you work for? Well, more or less for myself. For yourself? Yes. What sort of work do you do? Right now, I'm organizing an all-girl elephant hunt. Well, that's a fairly normal pursuit, an all-girl. <laughs> what did you say you do? You just hunt all-girl elephants? No, no, no. You better explain this, Beverly. I'm yeah? taking all girls to hunt elephants. You're taking all girls to hunt girl elephants? Boy elephants, too. <laughs> That's pretty tricky, isn't it? Yes, it is. Actually, I'm, I'm looking for a group of 15 adventurous women to leave with me next February for East Africa, where I've set up a camp, and we'll hunt with gun and camera for the big game of East Africa, mostly elephant though. Now, how much does a ticket cost? I may be interested in an all-girl hunting expedition. The whole trip is only $3,120. $3,020. $120. I can go to Vegas and shoot dice for less than that. Huh? You can't bring back an elephant? No, but there's a lot of ivory up in Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> I once shot an elephant in my pajamas, you know. How he got in my pajamas, I'll never know. <laughs> Are there any other charges for this trip, like funeral expenses? Just the, uh, the elephant license is $214. Oh, is that that's, just for one elephant? Only, yes, one elephant per woman. But I don't think that all the women will hunt elephants. Some will just go to stalk elephant and to photograph them. And we'll do things like picnicking on the slopes of Kilimanjaro, and we'll roam the Serengeti for lion. You probably run into Hemingway, eh? We did. Did you? Oh, you've been there before? Yes. Uh -huh. oh, have you uh, you've undertaken this before? When, yes. when was this? Uh, last January, I took a group of 13 women. Uh -huh. How do you like her, Lieutenant? Very nice, sir. Very nice. Would you, would you like to go on an elephant hunt with uh, Beverly? <laughs> if you were any kind of a marine, you'd kiss her. <laughs> if you were any kind of an elephant hunter, you'd I allow her. Just let it. <laughs> Come on, get going there, will you? All right. Wife Marine I've ever seen with lipstick. Huh? <laughs> oh, they're real chummy now. Huh? There goes the elephant, the rhinoceros, and everything. <laughs> well, you're certainly a nice young couple and very attractive, and I wish you every success, Beverly. Thank you, Gracia. And the lieutenant, I wish you a lot of success hunting Beverly. Huh? <laughs> now you're going to play your bet your life, and remember your partners, and one answer between you on everything. In the race for the $1,000, the second couple is leading with $80. Okay, you selected capitals of foreign countries, and remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. You can start with 10, 50, 80, 100, anything you want. 70. $70. What is the capital of Finland? Helsinki. Helsinki is right. <laughs> you now have $170. What are you going to try now? 50, 80, 90? 60. The bigger the question, you know, the harder it is. All right, 60. What is the capital of Sweden? Stockholm. Stockholm is right. <laughs> What'll it be, kids? 50. 50. What is the capital of Denmark? Oh, they say. Capital Co of Denmark. 
Copenhagen. Copenhagen, Copenhagen. Yeah, that's right, Copenhagen. You now have $280. And it's your last chance to be the other couple. Boy, is she making a play for him. What are you going to go for now? <laughs> <laughs> eighty. Eighty dollars. Eighty dollars. What is the capital of Yugoslavia? Whispered in the shell I gave, oh. Beverly. Where are my friends out in the audience? If you don't know, guess. Dubrovnik. <laughs> now you'll know it when I tell you. It's Belgrade. Oh. oh you lost half. Isn't it silly? Yes. <laughs> You wind up with half of your $280, you wind up with $140. Well, thanks and good luck from the Soda Plymouth dealers. Thank Sorry you didn't win more. And that means that Miss Putnam and Lieutenant Tabor with $140 in just one minute get the chance to the Soda Plymouth $1,000 question. Yay, family! <laughs> Here are some more scenes from Groucho's European trip this summer. Here I am in the Appian Way, the world's oldest road. And here's a character who's really seen a lot of vehicles go by in the past couple of thousand years. But we showed her an advanced glimpse of the stunning 1955 DeSoto when she really lost her head. You lose your head, too, the first time you see this wonderful all-new car. And that'll be on this program. Tell them when, Fenneman. That's Wednesday, November 17th, your first chance to see the great new DeSoto for 1955. Don't forget, Wednesday, November 17th. Here I am in jolly old England. You see that guard with the big hat? I told him a secret and told him to keep it under his hat. It's a big hat, but it's a pretty big secret. It'll be the date of your first chance to see the stylish new DeSoto for 1955. Here's that important date. Wednesday, November 17th, your first chance to see the stunning 1955 DeSoto. Here's the winning couple, Groucho. Miss Putnam and Lieutenant Tabor all set for the DeSoto Plymouth $1,000 question. Hey, you look pretty yeah. familiar to me. You were just Hi. out here, weren't you? Yeah. Here we go for $1,000. I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer. Think carefully and please no help in the audience. You ready? In 1933, a woman was appointed a member of the cabinet of the President of the United States. For $1,000, who is his first woman cabinet member? Mark it over. What is the answer? Smith. Well, that's a nice name, but it has no relationship to this at all. No, uh, it's Francis Perkins. Oh! Well, I'm sorry. That means the big question next week will be worth $1,500. <laughs> well, they lost the big money. How much they win the quiz, George? $140 in the quiz. Well, congratulations. And thanks to both of you, to all of our Thank contestants you. on the show tonight. <laughs> Friends, go in to see your DeSoto Plymouth dealer tomorrow. And when you do, tell them Groucho sent you. Be sure to tune in next week, same time, same station, for Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life on television. On radio every Wednesday night. And don't miss the big Chrysler Corporation TV show each week on another network. George Fenneman signing off with a message from the National Safety Council. Pay heed to these walking rules. Obey signals, cross at corners, look before crossing.